Hi, I'm Streaky. 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 Hi, welcome to Streaky Mastering TV with me, Streaky G. Hi, I'm Streaky. I hope you're having a great holiday and New Year. But here are a few highlights from my 2018. I uh, hope you enjoy them. Thanks for watching throughout the year and uh, next year I'll be doing loads more as normal. So please tune in. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, have a great new year. See you on the other side. I have been listening to loads of speakers, testing loads of speakers, kind of getting my head around what works and what doesn't work. And every speaker manufacturer that I have spoken to, which is obviously a few, have always said about their EQ in their speakers, or for instance, if it's ATC, they're just, they don't have any EQ, they're just flat, they are what they are, and your room is the thing that needs to be flat to, you know, then get the best out of those. The one thing they all say, and they all moan about is using things like room EQ or you know changing stuff so this is what you need to do to get the best out of your speakers in whatever room you're in firstly obviously tune your room and move the speakers around measure it with something like fuzz meter so that you can get it as flat as you can so you try you know you know your you know you should know your room try and get the speakers sounding as flat as possible not too bright not too you know bassy blah blah there's a few systems out there, the three that I know of, there may be more. The first one that I tried was Trinov, which was amazing. Uh, that was at Metropolis. Um, there's another one called Arc, which I used, but the measuring, to, to measure it, was really painful. You had to, it may have changed now, it was a while ago, but I had to make my own little grid to then measure it on the grid with a mic, and that was just so painful that it just didn't work. And then the one that I use, and I use it on every pair of speakers that comes into the room, and this is something that you need to use on every pair of speakers, and I don't work for them, it is Sonarworks. Now, a lot of you will probably be used to Sonarworks and use Sonarworks. Every speaker manufacturer that I speak to slags it off for obvious reasons. They're, nobody wants to say that their speakers aren't flat, but it's not the speakers that aren't flat, it's your room that isn't flat. And I don't think I've ever come across a room that is totally flat unless you want to spend a, a ridiculous amount of money getting yourself to that point which really is an ongoing process that you will be fighting forever I think. It's a really easy way to you just move around with the mic in the places it says on the computer and it flattens your room. So the Audio Technica ATH M40X. They do like a long name headphone manufacturers, don't they? So this feels a bit strange because the ones I've unboxed previously, or last week, have come with some really nice little case and stuff, but you are paying 80 quid for these, so you're not gonna get much of a case, are you? Pretty solid, closed back headphone. It's not gonna be leather, is it, for 80 pounds? No, not leather. Uh, pleather, a kind of soft leather, there's no foam on there, it's kind of like soft. You get two cables, you get this, the uh, stringy telephone type and this straight through cable, which most headphones come with. Yeah, I mean, for 80 pounds, they look okay. I don't think they're gonna fall apart. They're kind of sturdy, they're gonna do their job. But more importantly, how do they sound? So I'll plug them into my amp. I've had a quick listen, but I think it's best if I play them and, and sort of speak whilst I play them, if you like. So these are a bit awkward. They keep falling around all over the place, but they keep spinning around, so they're a bit a bit odd. Okay. They're fairly bright, which I kind of expect. You know, from lower end hi-fi stuff, uh, headphones and speakers tend to be on the bright side, just so it gives that initial impression of opening stuff up. Very similar to when you are mastering a record, it's very easy just to put a load of top on and it sounds more open. And um, so straight away to somebody without a trained ear would then think, okay, that sounds really exciting and bright and lively. So straight away, it's like adding loads of salt to the food. It suddenly tastes really flavorful. So somebody that sort of more used to cooking food and stuff then they'd taste more of salt you get what I'm saying anyway you know they're pretty comfortable I think if you were working on them I mean like I say they're all over the place but yeah they're pretty comfortable okay clips thank you he says he enjoys watching the videos wish you made them a bit longer question time what is your favorite food all right okay uh, favorite food lobster pasta 
and uh, thoughts on UAD versus analog. Okay, so UAD, I think it depends on what you're doing and what you're using them for. If you're using stuff for mastering, if you're out of the box for mastering, you only you don't need loads of each instrument or each bit of equipment. So I would say for me, UAD, for certain things, I quite liked it. I liked the pool tech on there, just running through that, doing nothing when I used it. I liked the tape simulator. That was good. I haven't really had a massive extensive look at their new stuff. I know that the massive passive was really close to the original. I know that UAD plugins are extra good. I know they're really well made but you're stuck into a into a box. So if you're using them for mixing, obviously all day long, if you've got it so that you can travel with it even better. But I think it's just a no brainer really these days to use plugins in general, but UAD because they sound really good. So you can have loads of them on stuff. So yeah, definitely UAD for mixing and recording. For mastering, I don't necessarily think that they're required. If you're out of the box like I am, there's plenty of stuff I've got that I don't need to lean on UAD. So I haven't really gone down that road. If you're in the box mastering, then yeah UAD great why not another question from Jacob is what is it about the focals that makes them your mainstay monitor other than the Stormtrooper white color well obviously the white is going to stay because I like white weirdly as you noticed but the uh, speakers yeah they are looking cool so a few months ago I reviewed the Teglia Audio Cream now I decided to keep hold of that unit because after reviewing it and playing with it and bringing it into my environment, I thought it's pretty good, so I'll keep hold of it. As you can see, it's in the rack. It's made it into the rack. It's staying. What I'll do, though, is I'll just run you through how I use it and why I think it's such a nice bit of kit to have. It's an EQ and compressor all in one. So it's a great mix finisher, if you like. But for me, as a mastering engineer, it's quite nice. In effect, it's a SSL compressor and a Pultec EQ across the top. So it's using that in combination before and after each, each other. So it's that kind of sound. So if you're missing that in your setup, this is a good one to listen to to try and get that. I don't have an SSL compressor, so that works, but it's that kind of passive vibe, you know, and that sound, open top, warm bass, very wide cues. Okay, what I'll do then, I've got a drum and bass track that uh, my assistant uh, has made, so I will play that so I don't get any kind of copyright infringements, unless he wants to put one in. So the bottom half is the compressor, and the top half is the... EQ, you've got high band and the low band, and then you've got an output for the whole system. Here you've got a um, side chain low cut. This is for the compressor so that it kind of lets the lower end through so the threshold basically doesn't get caught up with the with the sub frequencies. On the low and high end, it's um, basically there's no there's no cutting it's all boosting so really you're just doing two boost curves and then you can set the frequencies here from 10 to 24k and this is from 20 to 200 hertz full bypass of the whole system and a meter so you can see what's going on with the compressor okay so i'll start off with the low end just to show you how that sounds So that's the low end. Now I'm going to add some top in. So let's go at 10k so that you can hear it well enough on this. And we'll go for, uh, yeah, why not? 2, two dB. Turn the output down threshold so we're not doing the thing. Okay, so I'll just kick it in and out. Obviously the bass is still in there. Might as well keep that in there. And yeah, here we go. Okay, so you've heard how the, the top end sort of sounds. You can obviously change that to go a bit higher. Now let's move on to the um, compression side of it. So I'm gonna turn the EQ off so you can just listen to the compressor. That's one of my bugbears with this unit. Um, you know, you can't have it all for the, for the price it's at, but it would be nice if there was a switch here to be able to switch the compressor on and off, have this as a kind of on and off for, for here, and then have a main bypass for the whole thing. Let me just go on to the compressor. So I've set this up 
with a ratio of four to one, auto on the release, three on the um, attack. And this is just so that it's got that kind of gluey sound. I'll put this to 60 hertz so that you can hear, uh, you know, it's going through a bit of the frequency range, but some of these low sub notes aren't gonna be touching it and making it move. I'll put it in and out now for, and you can check out how you, what you think. Okay, so for the final one, what I'll do is I'll put in that um, low end EQ again. Let's put back in the 2 dB on the top. So we'll basically just put it all together, leave the comp as it is, and then I'll go in and out on this so you can hear exactly how it all sounds when it's all together with a kind of smiley face, if you like, doing this at certain frequencies. So it's quite a low and, and fairly high, and then uh, just a bit of glue in the compressor. So this is it all in.